Alhamdulillah. Wassalatu wassalam. Ala Rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Amma ba'd. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani r-rajim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Wa qul ja'al haq wa zaq al-batil. Inna al-batil ka'ana zawka. Rabbi shalli sadri wa yisalli amri wa ahlu al-ugdat min lisani yafqa kawari. My special scholars, my dear speakers, and my dear brothers and sisters, I welcome all of you with the Islamic greeting. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It's an honor and a pleasure for me to give a presentation in this conference on Masjid Aqsa and Baitul Muqaddas. I'll be speaking on the topic of the virtues of Al Aqsa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran in Surah Al-Isra, chapter number 17, verse number 1, Exalted is he who has taken a servant on a journey at night from Masjid al-Haram to Masjid al-Aqsa, whose surroundings we have blessed. To show him our signs, he is seen and he is hearing. Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he has taken Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from Masjid al-Haram in Makkah to Masjid al-Aqsa in Jerusalem where the Prophet, he led the prayers where all the Prophets were present and from there the Prophet ascended to the heaven that is Al-Isra and Al-Miraj We all know that Al-Aqsa is the third holiest mosque in the world after Masjid al-Haram and Masjid al -Nabwi. But the difference between Masjid al-Aqsa and the other holy mosques is that beside the mosque being holy, the land where Masjid al-Aqsa is, Asham, itself is blessed. And Allah says in the Quran in Surah Anbiya, chapter number 21, verse number 71, that the land we have blessed for all the worlds, for all the nations. And Allah says this in the Quran in several places that this land is blessed. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Araf, chapter number 7, verse number 137. Allah says in Surah Isra, chapter number 17, verse number 1. Allah says in Surah Ambiya, chapter number 21, verse number 81. Allah says in Surah Sabah, chapter 34, verse number 81. In several places. Allah says in Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 21, and he calls this land as Al Ard Al Muqaddasa, the Holy Land. So Allah says in the Quran several places about the blessings and the holiness of this land. It's mentioned in the Sahih Hadith of Sunan Tirmidhi, volume number 6, Hadith number 3954. Where the beloved Prophet Muhammad said, Tuba for Asham. That means glad tidings for Asham. And the Sahabas asked, That why, Ya Rasulullah? So the Prophet replied, That Ar Rahman's angel, they spread their wings over this land. It's further mentioned in Sayyid Bukhari, volume number 9, hadith number 7094. The beloved Prophet Muhammad. He prays to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh Allah, bestow your blessings on a sham. So you have several Quranic verses in Hadith talking about the blessings of Sham. As far as Jerusalem is concerned, it's the holy land. It's the holy city where many prophets they lived. And it is sacred to all the three Abrahamic faith. The Jews, they pray towards Jerusalem. They pray facing the wailing wall, that the western wall. And they consider the Al-Aqsa compound, which they call as the Temple Mount, they consider it as sacred. As far as the Christian is concerned, for them the Jerusalem is also a sacred city. It's associated with Isa al And in the old city of Jerusalem is the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. The Muslims, we call Jerusalem as Al-Quds, as Baytul Muqaddas, the holy house. And it is mentioned 
in Musnad Ahmad. Hadith number 23090. Our beloved Prophet Musa said that at the Jal, that is the Antichrist, he will prevail over the full earth except Masjid al Haram and Masjid al Aqsa. Towards before the end of the world, when the Jal will come, he will prevail over the full world except Masjid al Haram and Masjid al Aqsa. It's mentioned in Musa Ahmad, hadith number 22320, that the beloved Prophet Musa said, There will be a group amongst my people, my followers, who will always openly speak the truth. And no one will be able to harm them until the last hour. And the Sahabas asked the Prophet, Where will they be? And the Prophet replies, in Jerusalem. As far as the virtues of Al Aqsa Mosque is concerned, we all know that the Arabic word Aqsa, it means the furthest. So Al Aqsa Mosque means the furthest mosque. And as Masjid the Haram is given the title of Al Bayt al Atik, the old house, Masjid al Aqsa is given as Al Bayt al Muqaddas, that is the holy house. It's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number 4, hadith number 3366, that Abu Dhar, may Allah be pleased with him, he asked the Prophet that which was the first mosque built on the earth. And the Prophet replied, Masjid al Haram. He asked, which mosque was built next? The Prophet said, Masjid al-Aqsa. So Masjid al-Aqsa was the second mosque built on the face of the earth. The second house of Allah, 40 years after Masjid al-Haram. It's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number 6, hadith number 4492, that Al-Dar, he says, may Allah be with him, that we Sahabas, along with the Prophet, our Qibla, we face the direction of Masjid Aqsa until the 17th month of Hijri. And then we change to Masjid Haram. So the first Qibla for the Muslim was Masjid Aqsa up to the 17th month of Hijri. And then it got changed to Masjid al Haram. And as I mentioned earlier, that Masjid al Aqsa is the third holiest mosque on the face of the earth after Masjid al Haram and Masjid al Nabi in Makkah and Medina. It's mentioned in Sahih Muslim, one number one, hadith number 430, that Prophet Muhammad he was transported from Masjid al Haram to Masjid al Masjid al-Hanra was the Aqsa, that is the night journey. And in Masjid al-Aqsa, he leads the Salah where all the Prophets were present. All the Prophets were present and Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did the Imamat. It's further mentioned in Sayyid Bukhari, poem number 5, hadith number 3886, that when Prophet Muhammad told the Quraysh about Al Isra and Al Miraj, they did not believe. So Prophet went to Al Hijr, and Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala in front of him showed him the Masjid Aqsa, and the Prophet started describing the details of Masjid Aqsa, which the Quraysh were shocked. It is mentioned in a Sahih Hadith of Musa Al Hadith number five eight. 8.3 that when the Sahabas they were discussing which has more blessings is it Masjid Aqsa or Masjid Nabi so our beloved Prophet Muhammad said one prayer in my mosque is equal to four prayers in Masjid Aqsa and we know that the Sahab for praying in Masjid Nabi the mosque of the Prophet is 1000 equal to prayer anywhere else 
That means if you pray in Masjid Aqsa, you get 250 times more sawab than prayers anywhere else. It's mentioned in Sayyid Bukhari, volume number two, hadith number 1189, that our beloved Prophet Muhammad said that there are only three places where you can travel for pilgrimage to a mosque, and that is Masjid Aqsa, the Masjid Haram, Masjid Nabi, and Masjid Aqsa. So Masjid Aqsa is one of the three mosques where you can take a journey to. It's mentioned in Ibn Majah, word number two, hadith number 1408, that a beloved Prophet Muhammad said that after Suleiman al Salam, after Solomon, peace be upon him, when he completed Masjid Aqsa, he prayed to Allah and asked for three things. One, that let the judgment be as my judgment. Number two, do not give a dominion, a kingdom. Give me a kingdom which you will not give to anyone else after that. And the third was, when anyone travels to this mosque solely for praying, forgive all his sins, wash out all his sins, as though he's a newborn from the mother's womb. And the Prophet said, two prayers have been answered, and I pray that even the third is answered. And we know that Masjid Aqsa is the only mosque mentioned by name besides Masjid al Haram. Only these two mosques are mentioned in the Quran by name. And when we read the history, we come to know, and most of the scholars say, that Masjid Aqsa was built by Adam al Salam. Then it was rebuilt by Ibrahim al Salam. Later on, the main building was started construction with Daud al Salam. It was completed by Suleiman al Salam. And later, in 587 BC, the Babylonians came and conquered Jerusalem. The king of Babylonia, Nebuchadnezzar, He conquered Jerusalem and he destroyed Masjid Aqsa. For the Jews, since Suleiman salam made Masjid Aqsa, they called it as the Temple of Solomon. It was sacred for them also. Later on, in 167 BC, the Jews they rebuilt it. And in 70 CE, the Romans they came and again they conquered. Jerusalem and they destroyed the Masjid Aqsa. And so much so they were against the Jews and the Muslims that they made the compound of Masjid Aqsa a plain ground and they used it only for dumping filth, dirt, and muck. It was later on in 637 or 638 CE. The second caliph of Israel, second caliph of Islam, Hazrat Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, he liberated Jerusalem as well as Masjid Aqsa. The Christian patriarch, Sophanis, he said, I will only give the keys of Jerusalem to the leader of the Muslims. And Hazrat Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, he came all the way to Jerusalem, took the keys, and without bloodshed, he liberated Jerusalem as well as Masjid Aqsa. And he identified the spot where the Prophet had prayed. He cleared it. He cleaned it with his own hands. And he made a makeshift mosque and he prayed there. More than 50 years later, in 691, 692 C, it was the Umayyad Khalifa, Abdul Malik bin Marwan, who constructed the Dome of the Rock the golden dome that we see, that is made on the foundation next to Masjid Aqsa, he constructed that. And it was with the Muslims for a long period, for more than 450 years, until the first, first crusaders came in 1099 CE. And the crusaders when they won the battle, 
they conquered Jerusalem, and they massacred all the Muslims. Even after winning the battle, they massacred almost all the Muslims, and they killed them, the innocent Muslims. The bloodshed that they spilled is known in history. But Alhamdulillah, 88 years later, Salah al-Ayyubi, in 1187, he again, in the Battle of Hittin, he liberated Jerusalem. And the Christians were afraid that this Muslim leader now will take revenge and massacre all the Christians also, like what they had done 88 years back. But Alhamdulillah, the world knows that there was a sparkling difference between Salah and Ayyubi, and the Crusaders. He forgave everyone, so much so that he said that all the non-Muslims can practice their religion in Jerusalem if they want to stay. The Christians were allowed to stay there and practice their faith. The Jews were allowed to stay and practice their faith. All those who wanted to go to their country anywhere else, they were given safe passage. So much so that even the non-Muslims, they loved him. And he's revered for his humanity, for his mercifulness, for his forgiveness, both by the East and the West, by the Muslims as well as the non-Muslims. And after that, it was under the control of Muslims until 1918, when the Britishers, they came and they occupied Palestine. And in 1947, there was a UN resolution where Jews were very little, less than 10%. But they gave them 55% of the land and to the Palestinian only 45%. Then the first, first Arab-Israel war took place in 1948, where the Jews, they captured about 78% of the Palestinian land. And the second Arab-Israel war took place in 1967, and they captured the East Jerusalem, and they had security outside Masjid Aqsa. There are people that tell us, what is the solution? People say that the people who are the first inhabitant of the land, they are rulers of the land, which I disagree. I disagree that people who are the first inhabitants of the land are the ruler of the land. But even if you agree for sake of argument, from history we come to know that the first people who settled in Palestine, in Palestine, were the Canaanites. They were the Arabs. A tribe from the Arabian Peninsula in 6000 BC. 600 years after Ibrahim in 1400 BC, did the Jews settle there. That means 4,500 years before the Jews came to Palestine, the Arabs were settled there. And later on, in 70 CE, they were kicked out by the Romans. So I don't agree that the person who comes first is the ruler. But even if that's the case, yes, the Arabs are. The main ruler of the world is the owner of the full world is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our creator, God Almighty. And those people who follow the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are the real rulers. And Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Araf, chapter number 7, verse number 128, that to Allah belongs the earth, the full world. And he gives it as a heritage to whichever of his slaves he wants. That means Allah can give it to whoever he wants. And those who are blessed are the ones who are muttaqeen, are the pious people. That means the real ruler of the land are those who establish the law of the creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the face of the earth. If there is an Arab tribe which is doing shit, not on Tawheed, doesn't do justice, they have no right to rule the world. They have no right to rule that earth. The rightful people, according to the Quran, are the people who are on Tawheed and on justice. Today, all the Muslims in the world, we have to unite 
as one ummah. These borders of the countries were made later on. The Muslim ummah is one. And the line of Allah and the soul. And we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the Palestinians whose rights have been taken. We pray to Allah to free Masjid Aqsa. It's the duty of the Muslims that we see to it, that we beseech, we ask for help in sujood, in the last one third of the night, in tahajjud, to protect the Palestinians. Many of whose homes have been rampaged. The houses have been destroyed. Many of them have been tortured in the misery that they are. And Allah tells us in the Quran, in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 214, talking about the people, the adversities and the problems they faced, that the spirit was broken, so much so that the messenger and the believers, they prayed, when will the help of Allah come? And Allah replies, verily, the help of Allah is near. Today, the Muslim Ummah is weak. We are very feeble and we don't know what to do. And Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Al Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 139, that despair not, let not your heart be broken. Superior is the one who's on faith. So we Muslims should stick to our faith and inshallah victory will be ours. As Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Imran, chapter 3, verse 103, Hold to the rope of Allah strongly, that is the glorious Quran and the authentic hadith of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and be not divided. If we Muslims are united, and if we are not divided, inshallah, and we are on the faith with taqwa and tawheed, inshallah, victory will be all. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that May he liberate Palestine, Masjid Aqsa, Baitul Muqaddas, and may he give us an opportunity at least to pray once in Baitul Muqaddas before we die. I'd like to end my speech with the quotation of the Guru's Quran. Allah says in Surah Isra, chapter number 17, verse number 81. وَقُلْ جَعَلْ حَقْ وَزَاقَ الْبَاطِلْ إِنَّ الْبَاطِلَ كَانَ عَزَوْكَ When truth is heard again falsehood, falsehood perishes. For falsehood is by its nature bound to perish. وَآخِرُ دَعْوَانَ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ